So now what we're going to do here is uh, just go to SRC, new file here, store forward slash index.js. So this is going to be our Redux store. And inside of here, we're going to write uh, import combine reduces and also create store from Redux like that. And we're going to do const reduces is equal to combine reduces and ducks. So we're going to create a couple of ducks and we're going to use the ducks pattern. So do ducks here like that. And we do a const reduces is equal to combine reduces ducks. So we're going to do the ducks pattern here and I'm going to show you that in just a second here. Uh, but we're going to do a const store is equal to create store reduces and we're going to do window dot underscore underscore redux underscore dev tools underscore extension underscore underscore and window dot and then the same thing again. So we're going to grab that, put that here and we're going to run this function and we're going to do export default store. So this bit of code here uh, with the window bit here is uh, completely random, but essentially this is in order to get Redux DevTools working. So it actually is in fact quite important. Uh, now we need to include ducks. So we're gonna create a ducks directory and inside of there put a file called index.js. And index.js is literally just going to export uh, the session there like that. And um, this is essentially the ducks pattern for Redux is we have our actions here on the top. So we have const clear is going to be session forward slash clear const set is going to be session forward slash set and then const the default state is going to just be null and then our reducer we're going to put here and then const session reducer is equal to state is equal to default state action is going equal to curly braces like that and then switch action dot type and then for the action if the action is a set action we're going to return action dot session uh, if it's a clear we're going to return null and then otherwise we're just going to return the state as usual we're going to export default the session reducer. So we export that. And then we're going to also have action creators. So the action creators basically use the actions in order to generate these action objects. So the actual action names themselves, and then we generate the objects from there. So the first one's gonna be export const set session is equal to, and this one takes in a session like that. And we're gonna do return uh, this session, and then type is going to be set. So we set uh, for that set session and then export const clear session. So this is more like your kind of log out type thing uh, is equal to, and then just round brackets like that, put a curly brace and we're gonna do return and then type is going to be clear. So we have set session, clear session, all this kind of stuff. And then inside of here, we're doing all of this. So now we're going to include this file inside of index.js. And in order to do that, let's first do import curly braces provider from React Redux. And then over here, once again, we're gonna wrap it in something else. And this one's going to be the provider. And then provider, and we're going to do store is equal to store. And we get the store from the uh, store directory. So import store from store. So now we wait for that to resolve and do its thing. Great, so now that it's built, let's go back here uh, into the Classifieds app. And you'll see that there really isn't too much of a change, um, but we do now have the reducer. Um, in order to get that working, let's install the Redux DevTools extension if you haven't done so already. So Redux DevTools, and let's grab that one. Uh, the autocomplete here is dodgy and it doesn't work unless you have the full thing done. Anyways, it's kind of weird. Anyways, let's add this one to Chrome. So just this one here should be called remote dev or whatever. And now over here in Classifieds app, let's refresh. And now we see the icon has gone green. And you'll notice that we have init and we just have an empty state with session being null. So now if we want this to be something more, then we have to find a way to initialize that. So what we're actually going to do is inside of components root over here, we're going to initialize that inside of here. So firstly, let's go up into React here and let's include a use state. So we're gonna include a state variable. This one's going to be called initialized. So this one's just gonna be uh, a simple Boolean. So set initialized like that, and then equals use state and initialized by default is false. Now, if it's not initialized, we're just going to return uh, loading like that or something like along those lines. Uh, let's include use effect here as well. And let's do uh, use effect like so, put curly braces here, square brackets there. And uh, here inside, we're gonna do a GraphQL client query. So firstly, let's go up here. Let's do uh, import GQL from GraphQL tag. So this is for writing a GraphQL queries. We've used this one before as well. Import GraphQL client from hash root API GraphQL client like that. Uh, and then we're going to do right here, const query. Actually, let's do this one below so we can see it. Uh, const query equals GQL like that. Uh, and we're gonna do uh, curly braces, user session, and me is true. So we're gonna fetch the current user's session, including the uh, ID, the user, and then it's going to contain the email and the ID like that. So now for the query, we're going to run it inside of the user effect. So we're actually gonna do graphql client.query query like that, and then dot then. 
and uh, what we're going to get back, we're going to destructure the data. And then if data.user session, in other words, if this is not null, then what we do is we set it. So we do uh, round brackets, curly braces, dispatch. I'm going to include this in just a second. This is for Redux. Uh, dispatch set session data.user session like that. And regardless, we're going to do set initialized to true. So we're only setting the session if it in fact does exist, but either way, we're going to initialize the page. So now we're going to include dispatch and that one is from React Redux. So import use dispatch from React Redux. So React Redux recently added support for hooks, which is pretty cool. So we can just do const dispatch is equal to use dispatch in order to use that. And for set session, just underneath here, we're going to do import set session is equal to hash root forward slash store forward slash ducks forward slash session. So this set session comes straight from the duck and this one here, which contains set session, which runs this whole thing, takes in session, which is why we're passing that in inside of here. So anyways, now that we've done this, uh, let's go back here and it should say loading, but it should also respond. So it has an invalid hook call. Um, not too sure why that is the case. It's because I'm not running use dispatch. So I'm gonna just do that real quick and that should work just fine. So now if we actually have a look at our Redux dev tools again, you notice we have init and then we have session set and it actually sets the full session here. So inside of here, we have the user and everything, the whole session has been set. So now what we're going to do with that is inside of root here, instead of directly rendering login, we're actually going to render account details. So let's create a new component here. I'm going to call this one account details. So account details, account details.js, uh, include a file like that, right click new file again, index.js like that, we're gonna do that. So this is a very simple component, um, but then inside of here, we're going to put log in. So basically instead of rendering login, we're going to render account details here on the sidebar. And then account details is in turn going to render login conditionally, depending on whether the user is logged in. So the way this component works is we're going to include uh, login here like that. So we're actually gonna do uh, import use selector from React Redux. So this is the way that we select data from Redux. Uh, and then inside of here, we're gonna do const session is equal to use selector. And we're gonna get the state and we're gonna do state.session. So we're gonna get the session from the state like so. And basically if the session does exist, uh, we're going to return uh, the account component. But for now, let's just return the text account. And then otherwise we uh, return the login component. So we basically kind of have a conditional inside of here, a switch of sorts. So now you see ours says account, but if I actually go here into Redux and let's just say I jump to uh, before this thing happened. So uh, let's move this one out here. Uh, move this one here to the side, do that. And click on this button here and we do type uh, session forward slash clear. That should clear the session. So now over here, you'll notice that where we have, well, actually it's currently logged out. So if we go forward, you see it's logged in. Um, but basically if we run session clear, then it will clear it and it will log us back out. So that's basically what we're trying to do here. And obviously for the account page, we're going to add in the functionality to actually allow them to log out. Um, but that will have to do more with the back end as well. So now we have lo uh, login over here. Let's also add in account. So right click new file account, uh, account.js like that. And then we're also going to add in index.js. So actually inside of account here, uh, new file index.js and include it like so. And we have account, which is going to be just a simple component like that for now. But then inside of this file here, we're going to uh, use the same use selector. So we're going to grab the session as well and grab this line here. So we have the use selector and the session, and then we're going to include a couple of styles using styled components. So import styled from styled components like that. And the first one we're going to do, uh, firstly, let's go into theme here. And I actually have another color I want to use, which is export const mortar is equal to and a much darker shade of gray. So these are color names I got from that same website uh, a couple, uh, a little while ago. And, um, that's one I want to use here inside of this component. So you generally tr try to use them um, sparingly in terms of like, you don't want to add too many colors, uh, but you try to use the same ones consistently. So this is something of a design language, which you generally try to decide on beforehand. Um, so we're going to do uh, something like this. And inside of here, we're going to write color and then props, props.theme.mortar. And we're going to do font size is going to be 0.9 rem. So something like that. And then our wrapper here, and we're going to do logged in as and then we're going to write session.user.email. So now let's save this here and uh, let's see if this works at all. So we have account on the page, but we're not actually rendering the component. So we do 
import accounts from a account and we do that and we do that. So now we save this, go back here and you'll see it says logged in as test one at example.com. But let's format this a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is go here, write const email equals styled.div as well. And this one's going to be color, but this one's going to use a slightly darker shade of a gray. So we're gonna use um, export const Nero is equal to hash 222222 like that. And we have Nero here and this one's gonna use that. So we're gonna do color and then props, uh, props.theme.nero. Font size is going to be one rem. So a little bit bigger as well. And margin top, we're gonna to just put 0.25 rem. So now let's go around our email and let's just, uh, oh, I should have wrote email, not anauka. So we're gonna do that and get rid of this uh, apostrophe at the end there. So we have email on our component. So now we see we have logged in as test one at example.com. So now this is enough to show the actual account on the page here, but what if we needed to log out? Then what are we going to do here? So we actually don't have the specific functionality to allow us to log out at the present moment, but we're going to build that out now. 